Ik ben hier bij het nieuwste restaurant van Jamie Oliver, Jamie's Italian, om te praten met de leukste chef ever, Jamie Oliver. Ga je mee? Hallo Janneke, hoe is het? Hallo, leuk om je te zien. Hallo. Welkom. Deze is van de boek. Welkom. Deze is van de boek. Heb je honger? Ja, maar eerst wat het is. Oké, goed. 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 Hi Jamie. Lovely to see you again. Yeah, lovely How to are see you? you again. I'm fine. Well, we're not going to talk about me. We're going to talk about you and your lovely restaurant. We are here in uh, Jamie's Italian, yeah. and we're going to talk about your book as well. Five ingredients, quick and easy. How do you do it? How do you make of everything a success? Uh, well, first of all, the secret is everything's not a success. You know, I reckon I screw up royally about 40% of everything I do. But, you know, hopefully you don't hear about it. <laughs> the truth is that, though. And I think also, as you get older, learning to learn from your mistakes and embracing them and not being shy or embarrassed about them. Like, you know, trying something is not a crime and failing is not a crime, but not learning is. And, and really, ultimately, my message is always the same. It's about how do we get more people to cook? And is this book the ultimate guide for it? Well, I, I wrote that book. I wrote it to be the most ac accessible book I've ever written. What is the philosophy behind but, the book? The, the philosophy really is restraint, hold back. Not what to put in, but what not to put in. Okay. And when you do that, you start to be freed. Do you know what I mean? You start to get freed of space, of mind. You start to de-stress. And then the space that you've created, you can really focus on bringing out the maximum flavor from the food that you buy. So really, in, in theory, I mean, 75% of that book is healthy, but I didn't write it to be healthy. You know, it's real food, it's tasty food, but when you've got five ingredients, um, you kind of, it means you buy less, so it could save you money. Mm -hmm. uh, you, it, sh it might Waste. stop you wasting. Yeah. And I wanted to write a book that would create as many reasons to cook instead of not to cook. And yeah, but it's not... Uh, it also is some, some way, in some way not a good sign because people are getting uh, busier and busier and there's no time for slow cooking then. I think you're right. I think what happens in the human brain and in culture and in technology is we're programmed to shortcut, mm -hmm. to find quicker ways to do exactly. things. Exactly. And we start to do more and squeeze everything. And, and I think what I am trying to achieve in this is real food, delicious food, but also kind of do it in a way that modern day people can relate to it and feel in charge. So for instance, like, this is the first book I've written where maybe half the recipes are complete meals, but some of these recipes are just like a rice dish, a noodle dish, mm -hmm. uh, a way to cook chicken. It's not a complete meal, it's just a way to cook chicken. I was just thinking, is it by any coincidence that there are five ingredients because of My your five, five kids? Chill? No, yeah. <laughs> no. I actually, to be honest, I wrote the book for four ingredients. So I got about 70% through the book. And then? And then I, well, no, I, I just thought, look, they're, they're good. They're good recipes, but it's not good enough. This is your 20th book. Did it ever happen that you copied yourself? <laughs> not intentionally. This book was incredible. I wrote this book in four months. This is not normal. This is a very unusual scenario. This book wanted to be written, like literally like a galloping horse. It's very unusual, but, um, but I think almost that's part of its success. Like I was like reading the energy from the audience, thinking about what they wanted. And I started in a room with nothing and started like... Is the audience your boss? Yes, 100%. Are they in charge of Jamie in Oliver? In everything, yeah, 100%. What have been the most important turning points in your life? The most important turning points in my life? Wow. I think, I think um, when The Naked Chef was discovered 20 years ago, um, I was discovered on the background of a documentary and I wasn't supposed to work that night. So the night that I was asked to come and do an extra shift. That was a turning point. Wow. I think, uh, I think having my first child was a turning point, obviously. obviously. Um, and then I think when I opened 15 restaurant, which 
uh, we have in London. Uh, we had for 12 years in Amsterdam. Sadly, it's closed now. Uh, we've got one in Cornwall. Um, amazing projects. I think that sort of changed me as well. And I think that kind of taught me about how food um, and nutrition can help different types of communities and how food and teaching food can help people go from poverty to success. And, and um, that sort of changed me for life, really. And with a father like you, your children must be the easiest eaters in the world. They're right? pretty good eaters. Yeah. My, my kids are pretty good eaters. It doesn't mean they're not a pain in the ass on a regular basis. I mean, I think kids are kids. So their tastes are changing, their brains are changing, their emotions and attitudes are changing. You've got to keep an eye on what you know boys and girls are eating at different ages. And, and you're trying to get the good stuff in them. And, and of course, the best way to inspire them is to grow and to have fun and include them. And of course I do all those things, but even still, they can challenge you. You must sometimes feel you don't want to cook. Never, you, ever. Never, ever? Never. Oh, wow. Uh, for me, part of winding down is cooking. And if you're confident with cooking, you don't have to cook something stressful. That's why, you know, in the book, there's dishes that you can put together in three or four minutes and then you put in the oven for an hour or exactly. two. Exactly. No. That's not stressful. That's, no. that's easy. It's a creative then, process of, of this book, different from the other books. Yeah, I mean, I basically started with an empty room. I stick bits of white paper on the room and create the chapters. So I knew I wanted a vegetarian chapter. I knew that most people like want to look up things, go right, chicken, mm. beef, <laughs> salads, pasta. You know, I wanted to do some baking, some desserts, but with five ingredients. So I kind of put all those things out and then I kind of think about the different countries I want to express and then I just start putting ideas down and, and yeah and test cooking and and then it kind of comes together. In 1999 you published your first book uh, The Naked Chef and two years you will celebrate your 20th anniversary. <laughs> what would be the best present to give you? The best present to give me? Wow. Um, the best present I could dream of in the world would be that every child in every country is taught at school about food, where it comes from, how it affects their bodies, to learn 10 recipes to save their life, to understand that when you put a seed in the ground and give it some light and water that you can grow incredible things. And I think, honestly, and how to budget and understand the basics of nutrition. I, I honestly believe that that is valuable culturally, like to be Dutch is to understand those things. Yeah. If you don't understand those things, you're not Dutch, you know? To, to have a long life is those things. To, to have a long productive life, to do well at school and, and to flourish is those things. And, some, and sadly, I think sometimes in countries around the world, they think that that dream that I have is a luxury or middle class or, do you know what I mean? And I don't, I think it's fundamental. I think. I think now mums and dads work hard. Mm -hmm. um, I think the world has to change and I, and I think the best place for that to be celebrated as an incredible thing is the best class of all, which would be cooking. Thank you. Your younger self would be proud of you, don't uh, you think? I, I, <laughs> that's a good, yes, I hope, so. I hope so. I hope so. Hopefully he wouldn't look at me and go, what a dickhead. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Well, the, the presents you asked for, I can't give you those, but I do have some other presents for you here. Really? Yeah. These. So, you, I hope you can carry them home. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. It's lovely. Oh, oh three. sorry, sorry, three I've again. Got to learn. I've got You've got to learn. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Yeah. Take care. See you next year. I hope so. I hope so. Bye.